my uh, GPS will not turn on. Uh, the power switch has stopped working. Um, it was intermittent for, for a while, but then it completely stopped. Uh, the GPS I own is the Aviator. It's a great little GPS and it's about uh, a $600 device. I bought it at EAA in 2008 and then brought it back last year in 2009 because it wasn't booting up properly and it was uh, actually turning off and on constantly during flight. Uh, the policy at the time was to take it to the vendor. So I went to the vendor's booth that I bought it from the year before and they refused to replace it because they said they didn't have enough, uh, they only had a limited quantity and they needed to sell them. I went back to King and complained uh, about their vendor not wanting to replace the device once it was broken. So they gave me this new one right there at the show. Well, it only took a couple months before this one stopped working from normal use. But this time it's the power switch. So today I'm going to take the time, give Bendix King a call, and see if I can figure out how to fix this thing. I do want to show you a little bit of the device if you haven't seen it before. It's a little hand uh, touch, touch screen device. It's not powered on because it's not working. But this gives you an idea of how, the size of it compared to an iPhone. I think it's a wonderful device and uh, I think it's, at the time, it was the only popular touch, touch screen device available. So I just went inside and I tried to uh, do the first step to get the device fixed under warranty. So I went to Bendix King's website, went to the warranty section, and it made me log in. Now I've had all kinds of hell with uh, Bendix King and Honeywell, their parent company, trying to get my ID set up with them. Many phone calls, and that's why really I haven't gotten this thing fixed just because I can't functionally use their website. So uh, they did have errors and issues and it appears to be working pretty well now. So I was able to find out what my user ID is because I haven't logged in a while. In a while. And then I was able to tell me my password. So now I'm able to log in. Um, but what's funny about it is when I clicked on the warranty page it told me that I didn't have that error, don't have access, log in. I log in and then it still tells me um, that I'm not authorized or have permission to the warranty section. So, pain in the ass number one with Bendix King. So let's see if I can give him a call and get to the next level and get this thing fixed. Well, I just found on their website that you actually have to call the vendor that you bought the device from to get warranty service. So I'm gonna see if I can find the receipt because I actually don't remember the name of which major reseller I was using at uh, Oshkosh to buy the device. Well, I'm back outside to update you on uh, finding the receipt for the Aviator. I paid $649 for the Aviator at the 2008 Oshkosh Air Show, and I bought it from Pacific Coast Avionics. So, as much as they gave me grief about warranty repair on the last one, um, they did give me a good deal on a uh, Weatherworks box uh, to use for, uh, for weather with the Aviator. So. Let's see how they are in this warranty repair. I'll give them a call. Uh, I don't know who I'm looking for. I'm actually just looking for somebody who can help me with getting my aviator I bought from you repaired. Hey, I actually just got off the phone with Pacific Coast Avionics and uh, it actually went really well. I spoke to Randy and he gave me an RMA number and told me to send it in and they're going to uh, ship me a new one. They do have to work with Honeywell on it, and he did say it's taking a little longer these days because of um, uh, they're now doing these out of Phoenix, where they used to do them out of Kansas, so there's a, a change happening at Honeywell. But I look forward to getting this thing back and working so I can use it again, and I'll show you it once I uh, get it back in my uh, Aviation Pilot Channel Vlog. One last programming note, I am uh, at the shipping store. I'm going to ship this right now. It's February 3rd, 2010. So it's going to be interesting to see how fast this gets turned around. Um, I'm also shipping it. I've removed all the, the battery, the battery back, and the uh, data card from the unit. So I'm shipping it as a bare metal item, just as Randy requested it at uh, Pacific Coast Avionics. Okay, so it's shipped. It cost me $13 to ship it, and it's going to be there tomorrow afternoon. So that's not too bad. Well, that's it for this episode.